recording. Coyote and Bobcat heard of a white man who made excellent whiskey and decided they wanted some for themselves. So they went to this white man's house and stole the whiskey away uh, and went far enough away to drink it that the white men shouldn't be able to find them. So they sat under a tree and began drinking the whiskey and Coyote turned to Bobcat and said, Cousin, I'm so happy I just want to holler. And Bobcat said to Coyote, no, you can't do that. The white men are going to hear us. They'll find us. And Coyote says, oh, but cousin, this whiskey is so good. And I'm so happy. And I just, I just want to holler. What if I hollered quietly? And so Bobcat says, well, if you're going to holler quietly, I guess that'll be okay. So Coyote starts hollering and hollering and hollering until he's hollering as loud as he can. And the white men find them. And they're coming to arrest them for stealing the whiskey. And Bobcat leaps over the first one in one jump. And then he leaps over all the rest of the white men in another jump. And so the white men can't catch Bobcat, so they arrest Coyote and drag him to jail. Uh, Bobcat comes to visit uh, Coyote while he's in jail uh, a couple times. And eventually they realize Bobcat's visiting and arrest him and throw him into. <laughs> um, so the two of them are, are, are in jail. And uh, they hear outside a commotion where some other white men are trying to break in a horse, and the horse is just not working with them. And uh, Coyote says to the prison warder, "I have some horsepower. If you let me try to break in this horse, like I, I could make this, I can make this work." And so the, the the prison warder tells the men breaking in the horse, and they agree to let Coyote come out and try. And Coyote uh, sits on the horse, and the horse lets him. Uh, which no one else had even gotten that far. So like, oh, okay, well, maybe this, maybe Coyote's horse power is real. And, Co and Coyote says, uh, well, this horse isn't really too happy with you guys because you don't know how to give it what it wants. Uh, what this horse is telling me is that it wants a fancy bridle um, and it wants uh, saddlebags filled with crackers and cheese. And so the white men are like, oh, yes, of course. And they go get the fanciest saddle they can find and they get saddlebags and taps with everything that Coyote said the horse wants. And um, so Coyote gets on the horse again. And this time the horse is ready to go. The horse is happy. But Coyote reins it in and says, oh no, this horse, this horse is not ready to go. Uh, this horse is saying that what it really wants is a white bridle with uh, a bit and lines that are lined with silver. Then the horse will be ready to go. <laughs> So the, so the white men are like, oh, of course, of course. And they go and get those things, and they set up the horse with those things. And um, Coyote, like, tries again, and the, and the horse, and he gets the horse to move a little bit, but then the horse, he, he gets the horse to resist, and, and, he sa and he says, oh, well, okay. The horse is saying that it only wants to be ridden by someone worthy. So in order to get this horse to do what you want, I'm going to need a fine white shirt. I'm going to need a... <laughs> beautiful vest. I'm going to need a big show hat and I want pistols lined with silver uh, and then oh and silver spurs. That's what the horse says it wants and then the horse will be ready. So I'm like yes of course let's, let's go get these things and they go and they collect the things and they bring them and they dress up Coyote in the finest gear and, and they give him his silver spurs and his pistols and he gets on the horse and he digs the spurs in and immediately shoots off and the white men are like, hey, where's he going? And he, and he goes straight towards some American soldiers and the, and the American soldiers turn and they're, they're, they're trying to see what's going on but like Coyote's already too fast and he, he, le the, he and the horse leap over the American soldiers and take off into the distance. So Coyote gets far enough away where he, he feels like he's ready to rest and he wants to eat some of the crackers and cheese that the saddlebags are filled full of. And so they rest underneath uh, he and his horse rest underneath a tree. And uh, he's eating and, and uh, he, he's thinking about what had happened. And he realizes, he, he doesn't remember Bobcat is still in jail. He's not even worried about it. Um, and he realizes that uh, the American soldiers are absolutely coming after him. So he's got to think of a way to deal with that. So he takes all the money he has. And he climbs up into the tree that he was eating under. And lines all the branches with all of his money. And, uh, and then he gets a, a, a big stick. And so when the American soldiers uh, finally show up and threaten to arrest him, he's like, wait, wait, wait. Instead of arresting me, let's make a deal. This here 
is a money tree. <laughs> Every day at noon, a new crop of money grows. And the American soldier's like, you're, this is garbage. You're, you're just lying to us. He's like, no, no, really. I really want to sell this money tree. Watch. And he takes his big stick and he beats the tree and, and money fall, falls out. And the American soldier's like, oh, whoa, yeah, this is really awesome. And, and he's like, yeah, I'll sell it to you. Um, like, this crop is mine. This one that just fell out is mine. But, like, every day at noon, you can hit it. This tree is yours. And, and what I'll do is since um, you guys have all these mules, and, and Coyote thinks the, the mules are full of uh, pack saddlebags, and he's like, those saddlebags have got to be full of food. And that's, Coyote's always thinking about eating. And, and so, like, oh, yeah, sure, we don't care about these mules. And they give him all their mules uh, and trade it for the tree, and he's like, okay, so wait until, you know, tomorrow at noon, you hit this tree, and all, and the new crop will come out, and every day that'll happen. And Coyote leaves. So, of course, the next day, the, the soldiers camp out, and the next day, they take up the stick, and they beat the tree, and they keep beating it and beating it, no money comes out, and the lead American soldier orders the tree chopped down and sawed into pieces to see if maybe the money's inside, and they cut it up, and they realize there's no money inside. Um, meanwhile, uh, Coyote's camping far away where they're never going to find him. And uh, the, the the mules are getting hungry, and so they start braying. And Coyote's getting real irritated with the mules, and so he, when they start braying, he just starts killing them. He's he's like, you, you guys are annoying. Get out of here. I, I wanted you for the, the food anyway. Um, he kills off all of his mules and uh, comes upon... Uh, another 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 white man's a white man's house and um, uses the money he has to buy a burro, um, and uh, he's he's going along his way, and he's running low on on food and 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 money for the most part. He's like, what can I do? What can I do to get food? Um, and he thinks about his money tree trick, and he's like, oh, I have the best idea I've ever had. And so he takes all the money he has left. And he takes it and he stuffs it up the rear end of his burro. And he's like, this is going to work. And he, and he kicks the burro in the stomach and all the money comes out of its butt. And, and, uh, and he's like, all right, I've got my plan. And he stuffs the money back in and he rides his burro back into town where he had been arrested. And uh, the American soldiers are still off dealing with their money tree, so they're not around even. And he's like, okay... I have this money-making burro I want to sell. Someone wants to buy it. Every day, every day at the same time, this burro takes a shit. Coyote always talked like a Chiricahua. This burro takes a shit, and it's full of money, and you can have money every day. It's a magic burro. And uh, so, like, the people are interested, and they, and they gather around. He's like, watch, and he kicks it in the stomach, and... Sure enough, all this money comes out of its rear end, and the people are like, "Oh yes, of course!" And they give him money and food for the burro, and he t and he leaves with it, happy. So the next day, the white men, uh, ready for the next time the burro is going to give them money, uh, kick it in the stomach, and the burro just farts. No. <laughs> oh. And they're like, "What's going on?" And they kick it, and they kick it, and and finally they they say, "Well, like butcher it. Maybe the money's inside." And they butcher it, and they look inside, and there's nothing left. <laughs> the end. The end. 